A woodworking buddy recently came and asked me for assistance in building a chair. He has the frame of the chair mostly complete, but he was concerned about carving the seat of the chair into a nice, comfortable profile. Traditionally, to do this, I would grab my grinder with a cutting wheel, mark a few lines on a blank of maple, and get to work. But in this case, I wanted to use the CNC. The blank of wood that he provided is two feet by two feet by one inch thick. That's what you see drawn on the screen in front of you in my software. Here, I'm setting up the software to tell it to use center as the reference point and the top of the material as the reference point. Along with the blank of maple, he provided me with a piece of paper showing me the layout of the seat as he would like it sculpted. The line you see represents the shape of the seat after he cuts it out of the blank. Then I drew what I think represents nice pockets for your butt to sit comfortably in the seat. With this outline, I create a component in the software and use the component depth to smoothly sculpt that shape in this blank of maple. If I edit the component, you can see the properties of the component. In this case, per his specifications, I'm carving down 3 eighths of an inch. I'm using a cutout method and that's pretty much it. The software really does the rest, providing a nice smooth transition from the edge of the lines down into the seat shape in the vector that I drew. The software is fairly remarkable in that it also can visualize in three dimensions exactly the component that you're dealing with and that you've just built. So here we can see a rough sketch of the component in 3D. One thing to note is you'll notice that the scoops overlap the boundary of the seat itself. This is because my friend wants to trim the seat to the dimensions after the fact, and we want the edge of the scoops to flow beyond the front of the seat so that your legs are comfortable when you're sitting in this scooped profile. Now, to actually make the cut, I have to generate tool paths. So, what I'm going to do is go in and specify the tooling that I want to use for each cut. In this case, there's going to be two passes. There's going to be a roughing pass, which will hog out the majority of the material, and then a finishing pass to clean things up. Here, I'm defining the roughing pass, and you can see I've selected a 3 8 inch ball nose with the specified settings for speed and feeds and spindle speed and everything else. One of the important settings is the amount of material it will take off in any one pass and I have that set as well. That dictates the number of passes. Then I make a finished pass. And in this case, for this piece, I don't really need to change cutters. Normally I would step down to a smaller cutter, but for this, the granularity of a 3 8 inch cutter is perfectly fine. So I'm gonna select that cutter as well, and I'm gonna calculate both of those tool paths. My friend has asked that I don't cut the profile of the seat bottom and that he rather does it by hand. I'm still going to generate a profile cut so I can visualize the actual seat. And here I'm selecting a 3 8 inch compression cutter, even though it'll never be used and making a profile cut so I can show the cutout. Then I'll go ahead and recalculate everything and ask the software to visualize what the cut pattern will look like when the CNC is running. In the visualization, I notice something I don't like. The finished pass needs to do a raster with the grain of the wood for the cleanest cut. So I go in and I edit the tool path to make the finished pass a raster 90 degrees to the grain of the wood based on how I lay it on the CNC bed. I really like what I see here. So now I let it do a rendering and by making that profile cut, I can double click on the outside, removing that material, showing what the finished piece will look like with my carving. And more importantly, I can send it to my friend and get final approval before mounting the piece on the CNC and actually making the cut. One of the great things about using a CNC is that all of this work to this point was done on my couch. Now it's time to go to the shop. Here's the blank of wood that he provided me. I clamp it down securely to the table and then I mark the center point roughly, given that it really doesn't matter in this case. I'm going to use the center point to zero the CNC to that point, both X and Y, 
and I'm going to set the Z right to the center of the material with the bit sitting on the maple. I've moved off my couch and now I'm at the computer that's tied to the CNC and will be controlling it. I rotated the part based on how I mounted the piece on the machine. And I'm doing one final pass to ensure that my tool paths and tooling are set up correctly and that the 3D rendering looks great. I'm also double checking my Z axis and X, Y zeros because with the CNC, it's somewhat devastating when you plow the spindle into a piece of material at full speed, breaking a multi hundred dollar cutter or worse yet, bending something. It's always worth double checking. Everything looks good. So now what I do is I generate the toolpath code, the G code, which will actually get used by the CNC for the cut. I'm saving that to my desktop. This is a one-time shot. I can always regenerate it if I need to. And then I'm going to open the CNC control software and load that G code into it, getting ready for the cut. I can run a simulation to preview what it thinks it sees. So I can position everything virtually in the software, making sure that the physical material matches what I see virtually. In this case, I'm gonna load my ball nose cutter manually, and I've used a manual tool path rather than an automatic one so it doesn't use the tool changer. I load the ball nose cutter. If I were to use a cutter that was already racked in the automatic tool changer rack, the height of that cutter is known by the machine. But given that I loaded a cutter manually, I need to determine the height of that cutter as it's loaded in the CNC. Our CNC has the ability to do kind of a nifty thing in that it auto determines its height by going and touching a sensor. So I tell it to determine tool height and now I need to set the axes for all three X, Y, and Z. The first thing that I can do is move the cutter over to my mark on the material and using the remote and a little bit of finesse, nudge the machine to where it needs to be and tell it that that is X, Y, zero. So I jog the cutter close to the mark I lower it down onto the material very gently. I don't want to put too much pressure on the spindle at this point, but I want to know when I'm sitting on the surface. And by rotating the cutter and looking for friction or resistance, I can do so. Once I'm in position, I tell the CNC software that this is my zero for both X and Y and the top of my material, and then I'm ready to cut. We have two dust boots for our CNC. When I'm using the vacuum table as my only hold down, I can use the dust boot that's a little bit more aggressive and closer to the cutter and table. But in this case, because I have clamps on board, I really wanna be careful that I don't plow into the clamps. So I'm using the larger dust boot. With everything set up, I give the CNC the command to start and I go do something else in the wood shop while this cuts, pass after pass. Finally, after the finish pass, we have a nice carved seat. Normally I would have the CNC remove the actual seat shape at this point and do a profile pass, but my friend requested that he does that manually in his shop. As a little bonus, hang on to see how not to mount a GoPro on a CNC that's doing a tool change. Thanks for watching.